Wow, how about that, Denise Gray? Let's give her another round of applause. You're a hard act to follow here in the seventh inning stretch. So everybody will do a little stretch. Um, good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank the team at Texas A&M for all your great hospitality, Giggum, and everything that you've put out here for us. This is really remarkable. And this symposium is terrific. I've been fortunate to be an ambassador now for about five years. My name is Cindy McNiff Johnson. I'm a senior advisor at the uh, law firm Dentons, uh, we're the world's largest law firm, and I serve in their uh, global energy practice. I'm actually not a lawyer. I came from the business side of energy, and I feel blessed to be there and blessed to be here. I also want to thank the Department of Energy that I've worked with since the 70s. What a great crew. You guys have done a, a really great job, and a congratulations to our new ambassadors, Rachel Bittler and Maria Vargas, uh, the two of your wonderful new additions. Respect both of you tremendously, and I'm really thrilled to serve with you. Thank you so much. And I'd be remiss not to mention my buddies at MIT Energy Initiative as well as Stanford, seven miles from where I grew up. It's great that we have this phenomenal uh, cooperation amongst all of us. So I'm excited to have the opportunity to uh, introduce you to our next awardee, who's another rock star, and uh, she's going to be receiving the Law and Finance uh, Award. Uh, her name is Becky Diffin. So, since we're in Texas, I'm bringing you a Texan. However, she's a longhorn. Okay, so from University of Texas, Becky is one of the most remarkable young women. She um, started her career uh, with WEND, and she's really grown up with the wind industry. And many of you may know that Texas is leading the United States in renewable energy now. They have 27,000 megawatts of installed capacity from wind power out of a total of 70,000 megawatts. So i just like to say, go Texas. <laughs> Coming from California, we weren't sure they were going to beat us, but that's okay. At any rate, so um, Becky is a partner at uh, Norton Rose Fulbright in their Austin office. And she's also an adjunct professor at the University of Texas Law School, which was her alma mater, where she graduated in 2009. Uh, she served as the editor-in-chief of the Texas Journal of Oil, Gas, and Energy Law. And uh, so I'm just going to read you just a little bit off the Texas faculty bio for Becky, because I think it was so impressive I'm going to actually put on my glasses. So. At any rate, in addition to being a partner at Norton Rose Fulbright, her practice focuses on energy transactions, project development, energy regulatory law. She represents developers, private equity firms, investment banks, and a variety of public to private companies in the renewable energy industry. It mergers and acquisitions, joint ventures, development, project finance, and oh my God, I want to take her class. Don't you want to take her class? It'd be so great to go and, and do that. So in addition to all the work she does in her day job, she's there, sits on a variety of other charities, including being um, the co-chair of the Austin chapter of RISE. Um, so this is a remarkable young woman. I um, kind of feel my age when I read all that, thinking, wow, this is so great. I'm, I'm really fortunate to introduce her. So I asked Becky when I talked to her before the conference, like, oh my God, how did you, how did you, how did you put together this incredible career? And she said that um, when she was at her CC, that's Carleton College, as opposed to my CC, which was Colorado College. Yes, we're not all from MIT or Stanford or Texas A&M here. So at any rate, and when she was in college, she came home to Texas one summer and she saw an internship for Texas Wind. And she said, wow, that looks kind of interesting. I think I'll go work there. And I said, so then what happened? And she said, it was all downhill. And that was basically it. And I've been in wind ever since. And you know, as you can see from the installed capacity in Texas, she's grown up with it. They've grown up with her. And she's done a terrific job. She's now working in addition to just wind in the solar area, storage area, as well as waste. So I just like to say, I think it's hook them horns, and um, you would like the Aggies too. Uh, but at any rate, I, I just feel very blessed that she followed her passion, which was to 
go work in the business world, go into a law firm. But she didn't want to just just be a regular lawyer. She wanted to do something great for the world. She really felt like the wind area was a space where she could contribute something to make the world a better place. So I'd just like to say congratulations to our law and finance winner for 2019, Becky Diffin. You've been blazing trails, and I know you'll continue to, and we'll see lots more of you. And I'm really proud of you. Sorry to all the Aggies in the room. <laughs> So I wanted to start off just saying thank you to the C3 organization, to all the ambassadors. Thank you, Sydney, for that lovely introduction. Um, we really sit at a cross-section right now of two of the largest movements of our time, the fight against climate change and the Me Too women's movement. And of course, we've been fighting for women's rights for a very long time. That's not anything new, but things are starting to change. And looking around and seeing all these amazing and the women in the room is certainly proof of that. Fight against climate change is something that's a little bit newer and certainly something that the public is only recently starting to really understand. Um, for those of us who work in this space, you know, it's, it's a big issue and we're realizing we're actually very far behind in trying to solve it. So it can be scary and it's hard and I oftentimes think it's a little bit overwhelming because we suddenly realize that this is something that we thought was going to maybe be a problem in the future for our kids and it's a problem right now. You know, we're looking at the fires in California, um, storm drains overflow in Miami, um, hurricanes here in Texas, we've certainly seen a lot of that in the Houston area. Uh, so it's certainly, I think, climate change is the greatest challenge of our generation. But there's good news, and the good news is we're lucky to be the ones that are part of the solution, and that's a pretty amazing thing. Um, so like Sydney said, whenever people ask me a job, I always talk about how much I love doing deals. I'm a total deal junkie. Um, it's really, really fun, and it's something I love. But What's most important to me is that I get to do deals that matter. And when Maria this morning was say, talking about getting another lawyer, I was like, oh, this is not good for the person that's going to win the Law and Finance Award. Um, but what I realized is when she started talking about getting another lawyer, I, I'm not that first lawyer. I'm the other lawyer. <laughs> At the end of the day, the deals that I do help renewable energy projects get built, and that's something that I'm extremely passionate about. Uh, my passion for this industry seems to have really rubbed off on those around me, and so I want to take a minute to thank uh, my family for certainly being my biggest supporters. Uh, my husband, Daniel, who understands if we're at a garage sale or something and I come across a painting or a photo of a wind turbine or a windmill, I have to have it. Um, but more importantly, he is my biggest supporter and he takes on so much to allow me to work the crazy hours and travel the world to follow this passion for something that I really care about. Um, thank you. And he's also at home with the kids, but watching on the webcast. So hi, Daniel. Um, thank you to my parents, who I think are also watching. When they are traveling the country in their RV, they never fail to text me pictures of whatever wind farm they're driving past, just to let me know that they're thinking about me as well. And to my children, Bryden and Darcy Jane. So, you know, if you think about when people talk about a dog and the dog's just going along doing its thing, it goes squirrel, right? So my children, they'll be sitting watching something on TV or maybe we're in the car on a long road trip and all of a sudden they go, wind turbine, mommy, mommy, wind turbine. Well, the fact that so many companies have added wind turbines to their advertising is making this happen more and more. Uh, <laughs> but at, even at a young age, they know how important wind turbines and solar panels are to our future. And I love that. And as I look around this room, I see so many other faces that help us define what that future will look like. Uh, we've heard from a lot of people today about the big issues and, so, and how to solve those. We need collective ideas, creativity, brain power, and teamwork. And I believe women are a huge part of making that happen. So I'm sure you know, many of you have probably heard the story of the women in the Obama administration and this thing they did called amplification, but just in case you haven't. So when they, they were realizing in a meeting you know, that someone would raise an idea and then it would just kind of fall on deaf ears and then five minutes later someone else a man, would suddenly pipe up, oh, I have this idea, and suddenly he'd get all this credit for it. So the women said, instead of letting that happen, when one woman presents a great idea, the other women are going to make sure to echo it and say, yeah, so-and-so had a great idea. I love that. Here, you know, And making sure that her voice was being heard and being amplified. Um, so I love that, and I think that sort of teamwork is something that we can all take home and, and 
take part of as we want to support other women and have our voices be heard. And I think that it's something that we have to do to make sure that we're hearing the diversity of ideas that we need to hear um, to, to fight climate change. Uh, we all need a team around us to help us succeed, and we need people to provide us advice and guidance on a personal level as well. Um, earlier today, Landy was talking about the need to both mentor and to be mentored, even as you continue to move up in your career. And that's one reason I think it's really important for women to have their own personal board of directors. You may have heard this term before. Um, it's not an official title. You don't have board meetings. But a personal board of directors just means that you have a diverse group of people that you surround yourself with who you know you can always turn to for advice, to bounce ideas off of, you know they're always in your corner. So I'd like to talk for a few minutes about a few people on my board. Um, first off is my very first boss in the industry, Zaina Alazi, who hired me as her intern uh, many years ago, as Sydney mentioned. And whenever I introduced people to Zaina, I said, well, she's really responsible for this whole thing. Um, in the early days, I learned really simple things from Zana, you know, how to draft a cover letter. But more importantly, I learned what it could look like to be truly passionate about your work and make a difference in the world. Now, many years later, Zana is my client and a great friend. And another thing I have learned from her is that one of the best ways to balance work and life is to combine them. So I like going to the sporting events and playing golf with the guys. But when Zana and I get together for business development, we go get our nails done. <laughs> Uh, June Gray is one of my guests here today, and June started as my intern once I moved into a full-time role, and we've truly grown up in this industry together. Uh, another example of combining work and life, uh, June and I like to combine our travel and our work. So one year, we were at the OEA conference, the Big Win conference out in Orlando, and we came in early to go to Harry Potter World, and everybody kept saying, oh, well, how did your kids like Harry Potter World? And we said, oh, no, we didn't bring our kids. This was a work trip. <laughs> Um, but several years later, uh, you know, I was in the, working in the law firm, Jean was working for a development company, and she was the one advocating for me and my team to represent her company in what was really going to be one of their most important win deals. Uh, that company has since become one of my biggest clients, and we never would have gotten that first deal without June making sure that she made it happen, and she really advocated for me and supported me. Things came full circle uh, when we closed that deal a couple years later later. We were actually in New York together with our husbands. Uh, I was holed up in the hotel room making sure this deal got closed before the rest of the, the weekend. Um, but the reason we were in New York is to go see the Harry Potter play on Broadway. <laughs> Uh, finally, I want to thank Jen Goodwillie, who's also here today. Um, Jen nominated me for this award, and Jen and I laugh because we don't really know how to introduce each other or what to call each other. She, she started off as a student in my class at the law school, quickly became a mentee when um, she knew she wanted to get into this industry. Then we became colleagues in the industry together. We moved into working together to chair the local Austin Rise chapter, um, and now she's also a client. Uh, Jen, you may be my mentee, my former student, my client, my co-chair, uh, but more than anything, you're my friend, so thank you. Um, one of the things I love about women and the relationships that women have is how we can be multiple things to each other and serve so many different roles. So mentors, interns, teachers, bosses, clients, friends, women support each other, and we need to continue to amplify each other. Uh, I know some of you here today are involved in RISE, the Women of Renewable Industries and Sustainable Energy. Um, if you don't know, it's a national organization that also has local chapters um, across the country. And Kristen Graf's here today. She's the executive director of RISE. Um, I know I have gained so much from the organization, as have so many other women. And if you're not yet a participant, I highly encourage you to find a way to get involved. I'm sure Kristen will be happy to talk to you. Um, I'm really excited because uh, my grant money from this award is going to be going to RISE to fund some programming in support of women who are moving from mid-level to more senior and executive level roles. This is a jump that can be lonely for women. As you continue to move up to the up the corporate ladder into these more senior roles, you're more and more likely to be the only woman in the room, um, and peers become harder to find. So I'm really excited for RISE to be able to offer opportunities for women women as they become more senior to find each other and to grow together. Um, in conclusion, I'd like to say thank you to both RISE and to C3E for being places to find other women, to support them, to receive support in exchange, and together to continue to change the world. Thank you.